Hello and welcome back to Algebra, the video series where we talk a lot about algebraic constructions that can also be used in other parts of mathematics. And in today's part 4, we start talking about the concept of a group. In fact, you might have already seen some examples of groups in my Start Learning Mathematics series. There, we constructed the integers as a number set and they form a typical example of a group. However, in this series here, we will do the abstract way as we have already done it for semigroups. But before we go into the definition, you already know, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via Patreon. And please click the link in the description if you want to have additional material for the videos. Okay, then let's immediately start and I already mentioned that in the last video, if you have a semigroup and you add an identity element and inverses, you get a group. In other words, groups are just special semigroups. And indeed, this additional structure here makes a group much more powerful, much more useful to describe some mathematical things. So for example, if you recall the Rubik's cube here, you know you can do movements, but you can always reverse these movements. And you see, if you undo the movement, you get back to the state before, so you have the neutral element. So you already see, the group cannot just describe integers, but also such abstract movements here. Okay, then let's put these ideas into a formal definition. And first, I want to show you a minimal definition, so we only assume as little as possible. And then, in the second step, we will show that everything we want is actually implied. And now, you can already remember, a group is again just a pair with properties. And the first one is clear, if you look at the pair, you again have a semigroup. Which means, we have a set together with a binary operation. But now, in addition, we also want more, we also want an identity element. However, it's sufficient to call for a left identity element in G. So you also see G is never the empty set. And then the third and last property here claims that each element in G is invertible with respect to this identity element. And indeed, also that we can weaken a little bit and just claim for a left inverse for A. So to be more precise here, it means there is a B in G such that the binary operation B with A is equal to this E. Okay, and now I can tell you, this is enough to show that we have a whole identity element E and all the inverses. But we don't have to assume it from the beginning, because we can show these properties just by using these three claims here. Hence, the next thing here is what you should actually remember for a group. So you just need a set G and a binary operation. And again, we say this is a group if it fulfills the three group properties. And maybe now I call them G1, G2 and G3. Now, for the first one, G1, we can just take the important ingredient for a semigroup, namely the associativity law. It means you can set the parentheses as you want. And then the next one claims that we have a unique identity element E. And please note, this means it's left neutral and right neutral at the same time. And please note, in the last video, we have already shown the uniqueness of such an element. And finally, the last property tells us that each element in G is invertible. This means for a given A in G, there is an inverse in G and let's call it B. And you already know, the notion inverse simply means if you put it to the left or to the right of A, you get out the identity element. And usually in this context for this B, we write A inverse. This means we write A to the power minus 1. And please note, this inverse here is uniquely given as well. Okay, so these are the three important group properties you should remember. And now the question for this video is, can we deduce them just using the three properties above? And of course, the answer is yes. And I think it's a very good exercise to write down the steps. 
In fact, it's a very common thing to do these proofs when starting discussing such groups. Okay, now the first thing is not a problem at all, because the associativity is already included in the property of being a semigroup. Much more interesting now is to show that we have our neutral element and all the inverses. In order to show this, let's fix an arbitrary element from our set G. And now please recall our two things from the assumptions, so that we have a left identity and left inverses. So this implies that we already know about the existence of such an element B here. Therefore, let's call this equation here star and let's use it for the next step. And now the first thing we should do here is to omit the symbol of the binary operation altogether. Because then you see everything is much shorter. So now you see here for the following our B is fixed as a left inverse of A. And now the question is, what can we say about a, b? So in other words, can we also show that b is a right inverse for a? And for showing that, we can use a very nice trick, because instead of b, we can also write e, b. Please don't forget, e is a left identity, so it works for every element in g. And of course, now we can also use our assumption here, so instead of e, we can write b, a. And then we recognize that we can use the associativity to reorder this combination here. More precisely, we could say we apply AB to AB again. And then the nice result we get is AB again. So you could say in this case here, AB acts as a neutral element. Therefore, the natural question is, can we also show that AB is equal to our E? And in fact, in order to show this, we have to choose a left inverse for our element AB. And we can call this one C, and you know by the property C that there is at least one such element that fulfills this equation here. Okay, then let's put everything together, and then we see AB is equal to EAB. So again, just using the left identity here, but now we can substitute it by CAB. And you see, this is quite nice, because now we have AB with AB again. And there we can use our equation from above, and maybe let's call it 2 star. And then the whole thing gets shorter, because we can omit one of the ABs. And at this point, we can use the fact again that C is a left inverse for this element. In other words, the outcome now is just the element E. So let's emphasize that this is a very nice result because we already know that BA is equal to E and now we also know that AB is equal to E. Hence our arbitrarily chosen A in G is an invertible element because it has a left inverse and a right inverse. So it holds for all A in G, so G3 is proven. So the only missing thing is G2 that says that E is an identity element. This means we have to check if E is also right neutral. This means AE here should be equal to A as well. And now we have two options, so let's choose the first one, let's replace E with BA. And then the associativity G1 lets us change the parentheses, so we have AB and then A. However, now from the calculation before, we know that AB is already equal to E. So we have EA, but it's given that E is a left neutral element, so we get out A. And again, A was arbitrarily chosen, so these equations hold for every A in G. In other words, E is indeed an identity element for G. I find such proofs quite funny, because the only thing you need to do is to do some basic manipulations. Moreover, you should also note what we have shown here is that if you have some particular structure on the set, you already have the whole group structure. So you can weaken the definition in this sense, but it does not change the properties we actually have. We still have the whole group properties G1, G2 and G3, and these we will need for the next videos. There we will prove some more properties of groups and also look at examples. 
Indeed, the examples will show us that it is really helpful to discuss groups in this general concept here. So I really hope we meet in the next video and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.